The ziyarah of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam represents one small key to unlocking the greatness of the universe. On the outside, when you look at the ziyarah of the Imam alayhi salam, what do you see? It looks fairly simple. You see people traveling to Karbala, they go to the shrine of the Imam alayhi salam, they recite the visitation of the Imam, then they pray two rak'ahs gifted to the Imam alayhi salam and they leave. From the outside, it looks very simple. Just like the palm of your hand, when you look at it, it looks very simple. But just like there's an entire universe that lives under the skin of your hand, there is an entire universe, respected brothers and sisters, that exists in the ziyara of Al-Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And it's nothing short of astounding. When you examine the narrations of Ahl al-Bayt in speaking about the ziyara of the Imam alayhi salam, honestly, it's nothing short of impeccable. It's amazing. It's mind-boggling how there's an entire universe that revolves around the ziyara of the Imam alayhi salam. In order for us to appreciate this ziyarah which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, let us get a quick glimpse of the greatness of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. First of all, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, tells us in one narration, you know, some people think the origin of the Imam alayhi salam is heavenly. Yes, the origin of the Imam is heavenly in the broad sense of the word. But the existence and the presence of the light of Imam al Hussein precedes the paradise, precedes the heavens and the skies, because the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, in one hadith he says, The first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created is my light. Then from my light he created his throne. Then the Prophet explains, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then split this light and he created the light of Imam Ali alayhi salam and the light of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the light of Imam al-Hasan, then the light of Imam al Hussein, and from the light of Imam al Hussein, he created Jannah, the paradise. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Everything that has to do with Imam al Hussein alayhi salam is exceptional. Because what he went through is exceptional. What happened on the day of Ashura was exceptional. What happened to those women and children was exceptional. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the amazing status that he gave Imam al Hussein is exceptional. And if you have any doubts about the origin of the Imam alayhi salam preceding paradise and heaven, just look at how the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, used to treat Imam al Hussein alayhi salam when he was a young boy for you to grasp and believe how great Imam al Hussein is and what an exceptional creation of God he is. One day the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, was sitting on his mimbar. He was speaking to his companions. Just as I am speaking to you now, the Prophet was delivering a sermon. Imam al Hussein salam was a young boy. He walked into the mosque of the Prophet. Now, who narrates this hadith? Ahmed ibn Hanbal narrates this hadith. Ibn Asakir, he narrates this hadith. They tell us that when Imam al Hussein walked into the mosque of the Prophet, he trampled over his garment. He was wearing a long garment. The Imam salam tripped and he fell on the floor. You know what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi did? He abruptly cut his sermon. He came running down from his member. He ran towards Abi Abdullah al Hussein. He carried this child. He hugged him. He kissed him. Then the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Subhanallah, I did not even feel myself coming down from my member. This is the greatness of the Imam alayhi salam. And this is not something which the followers of Ahlul Bayt have come, came up with. Ibn Hanbal men, mentions this in his Musnad. The Prophet says, Wallah ma darayt anni nazaltu min minbari. Because the sight of seeing Hussein fall on the ground distracted the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, to such an extent that he did not even continue his sermon. He just came rushing down and then the Prophet afterwards explained to the companions, I don't know what happened. I just rushed towards Al-Hussein 
This is Rasulullah, and this is how he used to treat Al Imam Al Hussein. Salah is the pillar of the faith, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, there was nothing more important in his life than Salah. Yet, when he would go to sujood, Imam Al Hussein would come climbing on his back. He would prolong his sujood just because he did not want to disturb Al Imam Al Hussein. The Prophet, peace be upon him, even though he was a very busy man, he was running an entire community, establishing a government, yet he would spend so much time playing with Imam al Hussein salam. One narration tells us that one day, Imam al Hassan and Hussein, peace be upon them, were playing with each other. They were wrestling. They were playing with each other. And the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, came to view them. Imagine this scene. When you consider what happened on Ashura, just remember how the Prophet used to treat his beloved grandson. The Prophet comes to view this match. Imam al Hassan and Hussein are playing. Fatima al Zahra is watching. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib is watching. Now, as they are wrestling, as they are playing, the Prophet, peace be upon him, begins to encourage Imam al Hassan. He begins to cheer him. Fatima al Zahra asks him, Ya Rasulullah, how come you are cheering Hassan and he's the older one? Why are you cheering the older brother over his younger brother? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, what does he tell her? He tells her, Fatima, don't blame me. I am seeing Jibra'il cheering Hussein. Therefore, I wanted to cheer Al-Hassan as well. Allahumma salli ala The way in which the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, dealt with his beloved grandson was exceptional. No one can deny that. During his final moments, as the Prophet, peace be upon him, was passing away, it's a difficult moment. Imam al Hassan and Hussein, peace be upon them, they come and they lie on the Prophet's chest. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, salam, he comes. And he wants to remove them from the Prophet's chest because the Prophet was passing away. He did not want these, his two sons to have any difficulty on the Prophet. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi says, Ya Ali, please don't keep them on my chest. Let them lie on my chest. Do not remove them. And the Arab poet, what does he say in speaking to Imam al Hussein? He says, one day on the chest of the Holy Prophet and one day on the plains of Karbala. When you examine how the Prophet treated Imam al Hussein, salam, realize his greatness. Realize that your mind can never grasp the greatness of the Imam. This should, this should serve as a small window to comprehending the greatness of this man. And why, that, why is it that after 14 centuries we continue to commemorate the tragedy of this amazing Imam? Everything that has to do with Imam al Hussein salam, is exceptional. Everything. For example, when you examine the river of Farat by which the Imam salam, was slaughtered and massacred, the narrations of Ahl al Bayt tell us that there is no river, there is no water more blessed than the river of Farat. Drinking this water increases your love for the Imam salam, and for the Ahl al Bayt. And this water has the power of healing. Another narration tells us that every night an angel descends and he takes a heavenly musk, this, you know, fragrant smell from paradise, and he pours it into the river of Farat. And you know, even historically, this river has been the most blessed river in history. Because this river allowed for the cradle of civilization to take place in modern Iraq. And one of the amazing aspects of this river is that it provides effortless irrigation. It's, e it's very easy to irrigate the farmlands because of the way this river is situated, because of the geology of this river, the geography of this river. Indeed, it is a, it is a, it is a blessed river, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed it in honor of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. When you examine the soil, the grave of the Imam alayhi salam, the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed the power of healing in the soil of the Imam's grave. And this is one way in understanding the greatness of the Imam alayhi salam. 
One day the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, was playing with Imam al Hussein. Jibra'il descends upon him. He tells him, Ya Rasulullah, do you love Hussein? He says, yes, of course, I love Hussein. Jibra'il tells him, Ya Rasulullah, your ummah will kill Hussein. The Prophet, peace be upon him, begins to cry. The Prophet, peace be upon him, is in a state of despair. Jibra'il tells him, Ya Rasulullah, would you like me to show you the soil, the turba of Karbala on which he shall be massacred? And by the way, Ahmed ibn Hanbal, he mentions and he confirms this incident in his book. This is not something which our scholars have only narrated. The Prophet said, yes, I want to see that. Jibra'il, he with the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, allowed the Prophet to see the land of Karbala and he took some soil from that land and he gave it to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. This is the greatness of the Imam alayhi salam. This is why the city of Karbala, the land of Karbala, is the most bless, blessed land that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ever created. Narrations tell us that Karbala comes from paradise and on the day of judgment it shall return to paradise. You know when hadith says on the day of judgment, when the earth shall shake, when the earth rattles, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will elevate the land of Karbala. It will illuminate, it will shine to everyone on the day of judgment. And Karbala will speak, Karbala will say that I am the blessed land. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me because I contained the body of Abi Abdullah al-Hussein salawatullahi alayhi.